Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Kalpali Pomona and in this lesson we are going to, to cover one example uh, for k-min clustering. So I'm going to use the same data set that I used for hierarchical clustering with the difference that this time I want to group this data into two clusters. As you know for k-min clustering the first step is to define how many groups or cluster you want to divide your data into. And then the second step was to define the center for each of these clusters. So center for the cluster 1, center for cluster 2, and you can choose any values randomly to define the coordinates of center 1 and 2, but for this example I choose this third observation and last observation randomly to be the center of the two clusters. As I said, you could choose any random observation for center 1 and center 2 because your process is eventually going to converge to two clusters regardless of your starting point. But if you start with the bad center point, you're going to have more iteration to get to the clusters. So now what I have to calculate this time, I have to calculate a 6 by 2 matrix. I have to calculate the distance of each of these 6 observations from the center of the clusters cluster 1 and cluster 2. So let's write the first equation. So the distance measure that I use here is rectilinear distance which is the summation of the absolute value of the difference in distances between the elements of the two vectors. So for example the linear distance between the first observation and the center for the first cluster is going to be the absolute value of the difference between the first two elements plus the absolute value of the um, second elements difference and absolute value of the difference between the third elements and absolute value of the difference between the fourth elements of the two vector. But if I want to drag this formula along as you see if I don't fix the cell and look at these observation your center starts moving. So to avoid that what I'm going to do is to fix the cell that includes the coordinate for the center which is C11, D11, E11 and F11 in my equation. So I'm going to use function F4 to make these cells fixed and that's going to expedite my process for calculation of the distances. Now if I drag this equation along you see that for example if I'm in 4 you'd have the distance between 4 and 1. If I click here, I have the distance between 2 and 1. So we can repeat the same process for the second center. This time, I want to calculate the absolute value of the differences between the first and the second center. So it's going to be the first observation minus the second center, plus the absolute value of the differences between the second elements, and we continue to the third elements, and finally, the fourth elements. Now I have the equation, just need to fix the cell that includes the center 2. I'm going to use function F4 in Mac or just F4 if you're using Windows to fix these cells. Now if I do it right, anywhere that I check this equation, for example here should be distance between 4 and center 2 and that's distance between observation 4 and center 2. Now I have the distance matrix, I can start allocating clusters. So the, what is a cluster for the first one? Suppose that we are using single linkage. Okay, if I use a single linkage, the minimum distance here is from cluster 1. So this is cluster 1. The second one is cluster 2, cluster 1, cluster 1, cluster 2, and cluster 2. Now points 3 and 4 in addition to point 1 is in cluster 1, the rest of the observations are in cluster 2. So now we have to update our centers. So what I'm going to do is to copy this and paste it somewhere special as values because you don't want the formula mess up all the information. Now this is the schema that we have. What I have to do is to update these centers and find a new clustering schema. So if I I remove this coloring code here and now I just made a copy of the same table here because I want to just adjust these centers and this e uh, equation and formula automatically updates my distances. 
so it makes it much easier. But let's update the center for cluster one. Okay, for cluster one, you have observation, I'm gonna color code them, observation one, observation three and four also are in cluster one. So I have to adjust the center of cluster one by calculating the average of these values. So it's gonna be average of these three numbers. And then I can drag the formula along because every time I have to take the average of the points that are within cluster one to update the center for cluster one. For center of the cluster two, we average the value for the points that are in cluster two, which is point two, point five, and six. And then again, I can drag this formula along. As you can see, all my distances are updated now. I just have to adjust my cluster flags. So now the first observation belongs to cluster one, the second one cluster one, the third one cluster two, cluster two, cluster two, and cluster one. I'm looking at the minimum here and based on that allocate my cluster. So between 3.5 and, and 3.4 and 1.7, this is the minimum, therefore 6 is closer to cluster 2, therefore it belongs to cluster 2 here. So if I look at this uh, row, you see that between uh, 5 and to 1 is 4, 5 to 2 is 3.7, this is the smallest, so this belongs to cluster 2. This one belongs to cluster 2, 2, 1, and one because of the minimum distances. Now I have to see whether this schema is the same as previous step or not. So previously we had this schema. These two clustering methods or grouping are different, so we have to go to the next iteration. Again, I'm going to copy this to keep the record of whatever I'm doing. So this is the second iteration, so I'm going to paste a special as values, so to avoid the formulas missing with our information. Now this is the first iteration, this is the second iteration that we did. Now again, I have to adjust the center for my clusters. This time, what are the values that are in each cluster? Let me color code them. So the observation one and two is in cluster one, the rest are in cluster two. So this time, these two are in cluster one and these are in cluster two. So I have to take the average of these two observation to find the new coordinates for the centers. So this time the average is gonna be, I'm gonna update this average now. The average is gonna be between these two number. And then I can update everything here because every time you click, you see that it takes the average of the two observation. For the centroid of the second cluster, I have to take the average of the next four points, which are these numbers. And again, I can adjust the center for all these coordinates. Now the centers are adjusted. All your distances here are automatically updated. You have to update the cluster allocation. Between these two, this is going to be cluster 1, cluster 1, cluster 2, 2, 2, and 2. Now, is this clustering in the third iteration similar to what we got in the second iteration? The answer is yes. This is exactly what we got in the previous method. Then now we can stop and report that that cluster 1 includes point 1 and 2, or observation 1 and 2, and cluster 2 includes point 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, our clustering method is concluded. Um, please refer to your Blackboard for your assignments. Thank you.